All right. Hi, guys. Uh, my name is Arkady Shepram, a product line manager at Barefoot Networks. I just have maybe about three slides uh, to talk about what we've done uh, in terms of Sonic support, particularly in the latest Sonic release, uh, and how we're supplying multiple data planes in one single Sonic image. So uh, this is a quick overview of uh, our software development environment. We call it software development environment because uh, Barefoot provides a programmable silicon. So whatever the APIs that we provide, they're not fixed. They're auto-generatable depending on your data plane. The data plane is written in a language called P4. Uh, P4 is an open source language. There's a community project uh, that's uh, headed by P4.org. And uh, P4.org is part of Linux Foundation. So with a Sonic, uh, Sonic Leverage SI, uh, hopefully that's not a secret for uh, most of you. Uh, and in our case, uh, SI is actually built on top of uh, several particular data planes that are written in a language called P4. Right? And mm -hmm. there are some APIs that are sitting in the middle that we automatically generate. So uh, if you think about Sonic with programmable silicon, uh, P4 program actually defines a couple of different things, right? The uh, overall defines a use case because as Sonic deployments are growing, Sonic is going into tours, it's going into spines, uh, it's going into gateway applications. Uh, at the last Sci workshop, uh, I think Shin was talking about Sonic going into the WAN. So there are all these different scenarios where uh, people, people are starting to realize that, look, you know, I can't have one single uh, data plane to serve them all, right? So I have multiple different data planes, right? So in case of uh, P4 language, the P4 actually defines the features that are enabled, right? So whether you're doing L2 or L3, MPLS, VXLAN, um, or, or other things, and it defines the scale, right? What is the size of your tables, right? And uh, with P4 and a fully programmable chip that's coming from Barefoot, uh, we can actually arbitrarily uh, carve the chip to kind of have whatever size tables that you want, provided that they all fit on the chip, right? So the space on the chip is obviously not infinite, right? Now, uh, the challenge is, uh, you know, when we were working uh, with Microsoft and other folks in the community is that uh, having different sonic images, right? So a compiled binary image with different data planes becomes a little messy and becomes complicated. We can obviously do that, we've done that before. Uh, but uh, the request from uh, you know, many community folks is how do you actually have one image that supplies these multiple data planes. So as part of a, a 2018-07 release, which uh, kind of still fresh in our mind, well, what we've done is uh, we've compiled our SDE with multiple P4 programs. Uh, we've upstreamed that uh, to the Sonic community page. So when you download the 2018-07 image uh, with barefoot support, we're actually supplying these multiple P4 programs. So I'm just listing some instructions uh, on the left-hand side as to uh, what you need to do. There are you know, pretty simple things to edit one file in Sonic and uh, signify which P4 program you're using. Um, and uh, the different types of P4 programs that we're supplying. Right? So some are based on uh, just default uh, standard Sonic features and that we use to kind of uh, Run, run all the Sonic community tests and pass all the tests. There are other ones that are based some, uh, on some more advanced functionality. So for example, uh, one of our other contributions uh, to Sonic for the 2018-07 release that uh, Shin has listed earlier was the support for the data plane telemetry. Right? So we've done the SI support before, and now we actually have some Sonic infrastructure to leverage those SI APIs. Right? And there's an appropriate data plane program uh, to actually implement those features. Right, so things are kind of starting to come together and go hand in hand. Okay, so uh, that's pretty much all that I had today. It's a quick thing. Questions? I was hoping we would talk first about Sonic building, so this would maybe flow a little better <laughs> versus starting from the beginning. But uh, I can answer questions now or later. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Go ahead, Jeff. Yeah. Yeah, so the default uh, profile actually supports IPv6 because IPv6 is one of the Sonic uh, basic features uh, and their community tests that go along with that. Right? So this, diff uh, this first profile that you see here, this MSDC profile, uh, actually supports IPv6. But you have stuff while before yeah. the default. Yeah, 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 that's it. So 
Yeah, well, I think from uh, like in, from individual folks, we can provide the kind of more detailed information. I'm not like for every profile, there's probably a matrix that you can list of features and actual scale that's enabled. Uh, so that that I can provide on a kind of case by case basis to folks. Uh, Uh, absolutely. So those people who have uh, access to our SDE, so these are usually uh, our customers who have SLA with us. Yeah, they have full access to uh, those before programs. And yeah, as a result, they can go and modify, delete features, expand the tables, try to compile them. And uh, the question would be, well, how did we actually achieve all of this? There's obviously a procedure in terms of taking our SDE, compiling it, building it for Sonic. That procedure that uh, you know we provide to end customers, we provide to our ODM partners, there are a few of them in the room, uh, who are actually trying to make things easier for our end customers, right? Uh, so. So a couple of questions just to make sure I understand. So sure, this sure. is a single image, and you offer four different profiles. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then these profiles you set, reload the switch. Yeah, yeah it would require basically set and reload. Set and reload. So they give you four different characters that you can add. So they, they support like different features and different uh, different scales. And then yeah. and then this is uh, basically your um, your uh, switch uh, the driver in your uh, SDK and then on top of it you have abstraction and then it's on it on top of sure, it. Sure, sure. Yeah, on top of it uh, there's obviously implementation for Psy, oh. right? So all the Sonic features uh, they require implementation of a set of Psy attributes. Right, so whenever there is a community discussion for a new Sonic feature, uh, the question that's always asked is, well, what is the dependency on Psy? So for example, CRM had about 10 to 15 new Psy attributes that we had to implement. And implementing them would mean that mapping those Psy calls to uh, our API calls. But the changes should be expected to be limited to the Psy layer and the load, right? You don't... Sure, sure. I mean, look, uh, to, to Jeff's point, right? If you want to go and modify things and modify the actual P4 program and uh, change the scale or add or remove features, because obviously if you remove the feature from a P4 program and Psy and Sonic requires that feature to be implemented, then you try to configure that feature, it doesn't work, right? Uh, but if you don't want to do anything and you want to kind of go the easy way, uh, you go download the image, it's all there for you. Um, so. This is uh, this discussion is about the easy way. This is like the broad, the broader audience, right? Is uh, you don't need to go compile things by yourself. You can just go and for a start off your kind of proof of concept testing. Right? We did this particularly to help increase the adoption of Sonic, uh, obviously on top of Barefoot, um, because we didn't want to have every single customer go and you know grab our uh, SDE and start compiling things from scratch. There is a procedure we can provide it to some fo uh, to folks who have SLA with us, but uh, it is some effort. Right? So uh, it's all about how do you make uh, things easier? How do you make the Sonic adoption quicker? Um, question. Yes. What's the difference between a advanced Sonic interface and a Sonic feature to be spoken of? Uh, what is the gap? The the difference we've done some things in in this profile. Um, I can I wouldn't share like every single detail, but we've done some things in this profile to kind of uh, have a uh, very high scale for uh, Tunlink. Uh, and obviously when you do things at a very extreme scale, uh, there might be some other things that uh, that might suffer, right? That you might have to remove. I mean, that's the beauty of a programmable chip is that if you have a particular use case that you're targeting a very uh, high scale and maybe some other features you can remove, um, you know, we could do that. All right, so, but I'll, yes, Jeff, go ahead. So the problem with, uh, I mean, not the problem, the problem still exists for it's relatively low level language and it's a rock to hang yourself. You don't yes, know it is. How yes. To use it. Yes. So the question is really uh, higher level device model on top of, on top of the stuff, so I could change something. You know, we all build Snowflakes at the end. No data center is like another. Uh, tweaking P4 code, you will definitely hit some limitations. It, it's a com it's a complex array of things that you use, right? So if you would provide 
higher level data model of what supported, so I could change some stuff but still be within constraint, so I know my pi pipeline is still working. So any ideas? I mean, you've been trying to do something like this yeah. with Google with Open Config on top, right? Yeah, that's, um, that's a good question. I think the challenge is always the higher level you go, the less control you have. And uh, so far, our focus has been on providing more control. Obviously, the, like you said, the more control you have, the more responsibility you have, right? It doesn't go without responsibility. Um, yeah, nothing specific, I and mean, I would say right now in terms of higher level control. I mean, the higher level API today is Sai, right? So, uh, and uh, I know in the Sai itself, there's some efforts from like Sai Flex to make the Sai more uh, pro programmable and auto generatable, right? So uh, that probably would be the kind of path forward right now. 